We are now going to go on through the journey to build an analog computer. So I decided instead of doing the very typical editing that I've done in the previous videos, I'll show you as I progress through the project and show you what I'm learning on the way as I build this computer. I'm going to be limiting this project to a second order differential equation and it's non-homogeneous. So the computer itself should be able to solve this equation with ease. And the reason why I'm limiting this computer just to this equation is because this equation is very popular in engineering or in physics in general. And even more complicated systems can be simplified to just using this basic model. And the way that we're gonna achieve this is by using op amps and negative feedback and sending a voltage input through some sort of functional generator. So what we have to do is isolate this second order term over here. Once we isolate that, we can use this equation to solve the problem by using op amps. This function with respect to time is not necessarily needed to analyze because we're just gonna input that manually using our function generator. This term over here, we have to create this, which is a derivative through integration. So essentially to solve this differential equation, all we have to do is integrate this term twice and we'll get some function of x with respect to time. So essentially this is the problem we have to solve. We just integrate this equation twice, which will jump out these derivative terms and we send that back into this equation and then we use that to integrate one more time and we'll get an output that is x of t or a function of x with respect to time. And this can be easily done by using negative feedback from op amps. I simplified that equation a little bit further, ignoring the constants and so forth, so we can just start designing this system by just using block diagrams. So this is the very basic process. We're sending some input, which is the second order derivative, integrating that, and output is the first order derivative, and we integrate that again, and we get some x term, which is the function we're looking for. But what we know is that the second order term is just the summation of these three values. So what we can do is just take those three values and send it through the integration. But the problem here is that we have that first order term and technically we don't know that term when we do this calculation. So we have to feed it back from this integral or this block diagram. So all we have to do is feed that value back into the summation and integrate it and then we have our equation solved. I realize I forgot an x term over here, so all we have to do is actually add this to the summation. So that'll be x, but then we can just feed that value back from over here. So we just send this over here, like that, ignore this x right here, and now we have our feedback system. So if we send these all these values through and integrate it both times, we'll get an output x of t, and we'll use this to measure on our oscilloscope, on our little screen. We'll be able to combine this two blocks together to as one op amp and this should be one more op amp over here to perform the calculation. This is not the full block diagram because the op amp usually inverts the signal or the output so there will be additional op amps to re-invert that signal so we get a positive value instead of a negative value. I guess the next part would actually design the op amp circuit before we actually get into building it. Okay, so I took some time to draw up the circuit, and I believe this will accomplish what we have to do. This not includes the power supply, which is how we're going to power this op amp, which is not pretty difficult to design because I've done it before, but I'll go more into detail on that when we actually start building the circuit. So basically what we have here is basically what we had in the block diagram. So right here we have our function input, which is that non-homogeneous part of the differential equation, and we're sending that into this integrating op amp, the first integrating op amp. This is going to provide some sort of integration, and output is going to be the negative first derivative of the original equation. And we're just going to feed that back into this summation over here. And then we're going to repeat the process again, do that another integration, and get we're going to get that equation x of t, and then we're going to send that back into the original summation over here. So what these potentiometers are going to be doing is that we're going to use that to vary the constant coefficients in front of each term. Now there's some complication when it comes to this because you're limited on, on the op amp's gain or the operating region. So it cannot exceed the plus and minus power supply, which is provided by the power supply circuit, which we'll talk about later. But the value cannot exceed that because if it does, it'll reach saturation, which will affect the values over here. So essentially when we have a differential equation, we have to appropriately scale it so that it works properly within these operating regions. And that itself is a little bit complicated and we won't get into that till we actually build the circuit. So that's what these potentiometers are going to try to do, try to, try to get that constant coefficient that is useful when using this circuit. 
and then simply we're going to take our output and send it to an oscilloscope and see if we get the right signal. And the only way to understand how to get the right signal is basically compare it to mathematical analysis. So one problem I think might happen is this integral right here, this integrator right here, is that it's going to output a negative x dot and I believe if you send that negative value uh, we're going to get a positive value over here because it does that inversion again. But I think I need another op amp right here to invert the signal one more time because technically the summation includes only positive values. But I don't know if that will be necessarily an issue because technically the constant coefficient can be negative or positive. So maybe I need some sort of inverter right here as well just to invert that signal. But we'll see if that comes to an issue. So I'm going to go and design this circuit in PSpice and I'll get back to you on that.